You don't have yours though. This is an email what our Metatop D4E made by Westinghouse, this one. 1978 was last week calibrated. It's an American style. A bit scratched up. Had something dropped on a bit. This will uh, buff out a lot, like the last one did. The original uh, the seals when it was uh, re-certified uh, re last in 1978. Westinghouse logo there. On the seal there. Interesting how they did this with the um, email one there. They modeled the uh, bolts on the outside of this one. Had a bit in the back. Interesting. Nice gearing inside there. Hmm. Yeah. It looks so American, it could be made in America, but uh, it would have been assembled by email in Australia, I reckon. Looks pretty American, this one. The gearing looks nice, though. Look at that. That looks real cool. The load rules are the same, but the numbers are different on it. Let's get a. Get it uh, hooked up with my iscrometer and do some phantom load test on it. Do an accuracy test. It's got 35,364. It's 50 to 100 amp, 240 volt, 50 hertz, one phase TY, 266.6 kilowatt hour. See, I've got the American style of that thing on there. Oh, right, 26 and two thirds. Yeah, let's get it hooked up, test it. It's got a good bearing uh, system on this one too. More solid. Anyway, let's uh, get it spinning up its load wheel. Alright, ready for its accuracy test. I got that one out on the mark. Lined up with this last digit. It's nice and straight, ready to go. Jump the active in there. Neutral out to this neutral, energizes that potential coil. And that's the uh, phase out there. That all works, so all right. Obviously no earth needed because I haven't got to the metal case meters yet. Well, for testing the older ones anyway. It's good for that, so I can if I have another metal case meter I want to test. I can know I have a tap off that for earth to ground the meter out. But in this case, I don't need it with these um, meters here we've got. Kick out the ballast there. 10 amp ballast is weighing bin box of luck suggested. That's to protect the meters from being overloaded too much. Okay, potential on. Variac on. Clamp meter that we do the accuracy test. I get the tripod out here. I'll uh, measure the current as I'm turning the variac up. Right, time for an accuracy test. Okay, variac on zero, variac on. Potential on. Variac on. Variac on. Clamp meter that so cracking it up. Yeah, one's going slower. 10 amps. Yeah, one's going a bit slower here. 15 amps. Okay, that's 90 amps through that. Yeah, I've got some losses here. One's going faster. I only got a nine and a half through there. 8.7, my main one. 94 amps, yeah, got some losses. All right, I have to turn this off. Correct my losses here. So that was already about, hmm. Yeah, I'm losing a lot through this cable. I'll have to shorten this uh, test cable out. Got a lot of current truck there. This is a challenging bit, getting both meters at the exact same speed here, so I can get the um, accuracy right. Okay, I've worked it out. You've got to put both the current coils in series. So your current out of the check meter, phase out, connects up into this one. So you get your current going in, through that coil, back out through that coil, out through this coil, through the other arm. Um, tap to go to the transformer here. And that one there is obviously going to there. We're just going back through there and loading the other one up. So I'm hooking the two uh, load, uh, load coils up in series to get the meters to go at the same speed. 
Hang on, it's not very straight, is it? Okay, they're pretty straight. Okay, let's get them going on the accuracy test. Yep. Yeah, because before I had the current going in the run, then I had it going to that one. Of course, that was only getting half the current. They're going half the speed, so now I've got them both connected together in series. They're going to get the exact same amount of current between them. So that both load wheels are going to go at the exact same speed, which is what I want to do the accuracy test. Turns for long. Alright, get me clamp meter out, set the amps up, start cranking them up. Eighty amps. I'm doing a test of eighty amps here. So they're getting forty amps through this wire. Forty amps between the two. Perfect. Yep, same speed. The wheels are in exact sync. That's on the mark. They're both exact same speed meters too. So I'm only pulling what. Not even an amp off the grid doing this, so this is a much more energy bill friendly way of doing it. Eighty amps, yeah, I think I stick to about eighty amps. The header as a ballast is a good idea. Protect the meters. These wires here are getting warm, so I'm not worried about that. As long as the, the uh, current coils and the meters aren't getting too warm. What I should have done, I had both the marks on the load wheels on the same. I didn't do that. It's a bit harder to tell now. They seem to be going at the same speed. Yeah, the setup works quite well. Yeah, the dial type is a bit harder to tell. It looks like a dial type meter is actually going slower, but I can see the load wheel so exactly in sync. So, looks like this one is way ahead on the number type, or cyclonumeric type that's called. So far, so good. Let's get my clamp meter out. I'll do this off to be able to see what I'm pulling here, but see what I'm pulling off the grid off the mains here. It's not going to be much. Oh, that's pretty good. About two amps I'm pulling off the grid. The mains, that's alright. Not bad. Yep, we're almost halfway and so far the meters are in exact synchronization with each other. So far this one's pretty accurate. Here we are, 80 amps going through those meters, and I'm only pulling 2 amps from the grid. Heh. <laughs> That's one way to save energy and enjoy your load wheel spinning at the same time. Halfway, yep, they're both halfway. So far, so good. Yeah, the wires here are warm. This last wire is warm, but it's not not so warm that the insulation's falling off it. Yep, look at that. So far, so good. The main wire, though, the mot secondaries and stuff. Uh, Fairly warm, obviously, because it's bigger. Yep, 
Yeah, I'm pretty confident with it. The heaters, the neons on the heater aren't even on yet. So that's putting barely any load in now as a ballast. Hmm, I've got some more warmth for these uh, wires here though. Yep, yeah, pretty good on accuracy. Beautiful, this phantom load setup works great. I should have done this in the first place. I love that humming. Just going to make a terminal cover for this one. Haven't got around to it yet. Yep, but yeah, it's, it's not moving very fast at all. Just sit back and enjoy watching those wheels spin. Seven minutes so far, this test. I'm not going to put exactly 100 amps through them just because it says 100 amps. Got to be take it easy on these meters. Don't want to push them too hard. I don't want to um, risk uh, cooking the current coils in them, as these are for my collection. So it does take ages, but. They are slower meters at 266.6 wheels per kilowatt hour. Obviously I'm going to do the test over a kilowatt hour, so those wheels are going to turn 266.6 times, so before I was doing it by one tenth, so those accuracy tests weren't taking long at all, just with 10 amp on that heater. Because I'm doing a proper, over one kilowatt hour proper test now, it's taking ages. But uh, I like I just leave this bit unedited. Watch those meter wheels spin. Almost there. Yeah. It's just something magical about watching those gears turn. I need to turn the power off. Let's turn the potential off and when they get when the ISQA one gets exactly spot on at one kilowatt hour mark. Almost I can just see it. Three, two, one. Power off. Power back off. Now 125, eh, just a tad under 130 volts on the variac. It's 80 amps through this uh, load transformer here. Yep, all well, unplug safety first. Always do that before you go touching wires. Oops, that boom. And the meter. Staying cold. Staying cold. Now I'm only doing this by finger because I don't have an um, infrared thermometer but yeah they're, they're staying cold in there so the meters are fine. Alright, okay. Let's uh, give this one a bit of a clean up. Okay viewers, well, this one cleaned up quite well. What a muck cleaned off it, look at that, you can see all the gears in there, real nice. Just awesome, look at that. Got a ram drive in there, the main gear in there. Reminds me of um, a lot of like a, of an American made this one. A lot of uh, similarities. See, it's pretty much an Australian version of an American meter. They also had ones like this that EMR made, but this same um, internals I think had a socket type as well because it had the square bit around it. I didn't have all this other terminal cover arrangement on it, so it's good to get some of those as well and the sockets they plug into. You can see there. You see all the insides, the brake magnets, I think, are in there. This only has one set, I think I can see. And there's the uh, spring there that uh, adjusts the um, speed. You see how all that works. Um, still yet to make a terminal cover for this one, so. That's just made of all restored and cleaned up.
Alright, a quick and dirty terminal cover. Still spring is getting in there. Pretty much all done. Here we are. The scuff marks aren't too bad on this either. It's actually cleaned up quite well. Looks like it actually went through, but there's no hole there. So something sharp's landed on that. But they cleaned up quite well this one. Anyway, that'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching.